Hey guys, we're going to do a fun springtime bunny in gouache. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and I am here with a fun springtime bunny. I really liked the setting this bunny was in with that dark behind him and that little bit of blue, probably a building, but I'm going to make it the sky. He has some grass and things down here. I think I'm going to be setting him down into more green lush grass with some clovers. So let's get started with the materials. These materials right here are on my palette in this order. I have burnt umber, yellow ochre, crimson red, ultramarine blue, lilac, sap green, yellow, violet, crimson, and two little plops of white. That makes it easier to keep some colors sort of segregated. I probably will zoom in on the bunny, but first I need to take my eraser and roll off some of that graphite. Now I drew the bunny by hand and I didn't record the drawing because I was sitting in my chair. You know, sometimes you sit in your comfort place and you sketch and draw and then realize later, hmm, people might have wanted to see how to do it. But I do have a traceable of my bunny that is available. I have put it on my website and it is in my YouTube description below on how to get to it on Facebook and my website. There we go. <laughs> this also works as a coloring sheet. If you've got the children or grandchildren around and you want to have something for them to do, them to do, I'm getting a little bit frazzled today for some reason. Maybe because it's Friday and I'm having to remember what day of the week it is. So we have a coloring sheet for the kids or you can use it as a traceable. To put your picture onto your watercolor paper. I am using 140 pound watercolor paper and this is Arteza paper along with the Arteza gouache. All of the materials are listed down below in the more information box with affiliate links. I do earn a small commission from affiliate links if you happen to buy anything through those. And that's the same for Amazon or for Arteza. And on Arteza, I have a coupon code good for 10% off your entire purchase. And I have a new coupon code also listed so that um, you can just flow into April. You don't have to worry about uh, finding a new coupon code because I already have it there for you. Basically, it's just the next number up. <laughs> and because I'm doing so much with Arteza right now, Monthly, I seem to be getting the next number up. So just as a little heads up there, I'm going to get some of this graphite rolled off. I'm using a kneaded eraser. Kind of stretch it so it's sticky. And welcome to everybody who's here. I appreciate you showing up and coming to hang out in the studio. And you know, if you are doing your own art, let us know in the chat what you're up to. I saw that uh, one of our people is working on swatching their colored pencils. That is an awesome thing to do while watching somebody else do art because it feels a little more community. feels like you're all sitting in the same room and you're doing your own thing. But you can look over and you can see what somebody else is doing. I like that feeling. It's been a long time since I was in an art class. So now I have just a little spool of that was from tape that I'm sitting behind here, hoping to keep it tipped up enough for you to see. And so just like yesterday, when I asked if you want to see the close up of the bunny or close up of the painting, or do you want to see the, um, the painting farther out and the palette also, let me know. I do have two jars of water, so I've got a dirty jar and a clean jar. Those are going to be sitting slightly back out of the way. I have a little handful of brushes and a piece of paper towel. So I have a fairly large brush 
This is a number one, or not a number one. How about a one inch? This is a one inch Simply Simmons, and it is their flat wash, and it's got the clear plastic handle on it. It's kind of nice. I like it. It uh, keeps a pretty good edge, and it holds quite a bit of water. Then I have some Mimic Squirrel Brushes by Creative Mark. This is a number 12 round. I have a number one rigger, which is that really long skinny one. Makes really great whiskers. And a number two round. So the difference between a 12 and a two. <laughs> Pretty cool. And I'm going to drop those on my right hand because that's actually easier for me to see or for me to pick them up. All right. Close up on the bunny. I like that. I'm trying to... Okay, I think I figured something out. That's not going to work, but this might. Ah, that will be better. It won't rattle around quite so much. Hello there. You like to see the... Oh my, I've got a half and half. Well, let's see if I can make this bigger. Come on, why are you... Are you not quite... <clears throat> My camera is being a little, is playing up a little on me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Ah, oh, yeah, Sandy, I love the Mimic Squirrels. They are great brushes. All right, so that isn't going to work. Oh, I know why that's not going to work, because it's black. Come on. Oh, come on. My, um, here, I have to, I have to set something, guys. I'm sorry. There. All right, that will be better. And I will zoom in on him. Either is fine, either too. Okay, well, why don't I try zooming in just a little bit and see if I can keep some of that palette in there also. There, but now I need to get him to focus. There. Okay. So it's a little bit darker though. I hope he works for you guys. All right, we're gonna get this going. I need to paint. So what I'm doing is I am taking a little bit of ultramarine and white, but I want to get the background wet up here behind the bunny. And if there's a little bit of color in my brush right now, no big deal. So we're just putting clean white, uh, clean white, clean, clear water onto the background. Pretty much I'm going to stay blue up here at the top, the blue colors, and then I'm going to go into more of the greens and yellows down here behind him. Nice thing with gouache is that you can get those colors all put on at the same time and you don't really have to worry about it uh, bleeding over. Thank you very much. I, I really thought that the, this bunny just made me happy. <laughs> and I don't have a picture-in-picture uh, -picture on this. I forgot to grab the bunny to put on picture-in-picture -picture here. So th this is the reference, and I'll kind of show it to you every once in a while. Yes, Mark? All right, so apparently I was getting it. I got whatever it was Mark needed. So maybe somebody had asked about the picture in picture. What was it? Oh, yeah, yeah. The little symbol on the screen that showed up. That was when I was adjusting my focus and my exposure. Hello, Gabby from France. Nice to see you and Carol. All right, guys, I am going to start focusing on getting this painted in now. So I'm taking some ultramarine blue over into my palette. That is such a yummy color. Very, very vivid, actually. 
and white. And I'm going to get kind of a gradiated tone going. So I'm going to take it a little bit darker at the top and then work my way down. And I'm not totally mixing my white and my blue together. I am letting it flow into the bunny's ears a bit. I'm going to keep a pretty good pretty, bleh, pretty good bead on where those ears are, leaving a little bit, but this does not show your pencil lines through when you're painting thicker. This is being done with standard gouache. So this is an opaque watercolor medium or media. So we can layer our light colors over our dark colors just like acrylic, but we can lay things in in thin washes just like watercolor, and we can also reactivate the color. I'm picking up a bit more white, lighten it up as it comes down. I'm pretty much changing the background. Just want to get a nice wash of color in here. It is going to be streaky. I'm doing that on purpose so that there's a little bit of movement and such in the sky behind him. He's going to be very opaque standing in front of this. So you're going to believe that he's in the scene, not just on top of the scene. So there we go. So right now we just are getting in that background. I might come back in and put a little bit of some clouds in. Just sort of looking going there. Keep his keep his horizon behind him kind of flat. Is ultramarine the best used for painting the sky? It depends on the time of year. Colder skies the Thalo Blues work really well for the colder type skies. The Ultramarine is a little bit of a warmer color, so it makes you think more of springtime or summertime skies. And I am really thinking springtime here. You know, let's get this bunny in for the, uh, for the coming Easter or springtime season, new birth. I'm getting some of the lemon yellow and the sap green, and I'm just using any little edge of my palette. Maybe a little bit of the yellow ochre. And not mixing it totally. And I know some people have a thing about, you know, saying, well, gouache needs to be mixed totally. You need to work in flat colors. And, you know, nothing is absolute in art. You can work things out. So I'm going to give him just a bit of a out of focus. It will be out of focus in that background. By the time I'm done, it's going to feel like there's some grass and stuff back there, but it's going to be out of focus. And I'm just working my way forward, getting a base layer of color down. Yeah, no problem, Mary. I just picked up some ultra or some yellow ochre to kind of work into that grass in the front. And the reason why I'm doing this is the bunny is on top of this area or he's in front of this area. So let's go ahead and get those colors in that are a little bit darker because we can then put our light colors on top of him. And tapping those, tapping on the, the canvas or the board here, and we're getting the, getting it tapping against the brushes. All right. Now I need to get that back over. That's the hard thing, keeping it, keeping it big enough for you guys to see, keeping it small enough so I can get enough things onto the, onto the screen so you can see. 
but keeping it so that I can still do <laughs> the painting. Let's see. You know what? It really, it is a lot of fun. And you learn how to do, you learn how to do different techniques as you're going along. So, because I do have a bit of an art background, I've been doing art all my life, and I can kind of break things down to as I'm looking at it. Now, this is the background. This is, we're blocking in color. I will be bringing some brighter colors in here. See how that's coming along, though. Maybe I'll grab some of that yellow ochre now and get some of that. Maybe a little bit of white into the yellow ochre, make it a little more tan. Oh, yeah. So we can get this grass going on here and the inside tones of it. All right. So if you happen to do social media type stuff, if you could share my channel and my videos with your friends on your social media, that would be really helpful. I'm kind of struggling right now with, you know, with all this all the stuff that's going on, I would think that my channel would be picking up lots and lots more views. It hasn't picked up as much as I thought it would. So if you would help me out, that would be really great. You know, helping out doesn't always mean having to spend money. Sometimes helping out is just pushing a share button. So I'm going to start blending some of this green in. I like that it can feel like oil paint. It can feel in the look. It can feel like oil paint in the look. It can feel like acrylic in its look. It can feel like watercolor. That's why I'm really enjoying playing with these. There will be some more grasses and stuff growing up around the bunny. But for right now, I think that part's done. <laughs> a ladybug on his nose. You know, I did a ladybug with the kitty. I think this guy is just going to be sitting in the clover. He's he's very he's a solitary bunny. He's kind of like, mm, you know what? I don't want any friends right now. I'm feeling a little bit huh about life. So he's feeling a little. Uh, about life, I'm going to let him feel that way, you know? So I'm taking a tiny touch of crimson and some white to make me a pink. And I'm still doing that with this is a, num is a half inch snap brush. And I'm going to go in and get the inside of his ears. Now they are not going to be this totally total pink by the time we're done, but there is a certain amount of blood flow that goes to the ears and you want to show that. I did bring the sky down into his ear quite a bit. So I'm just going to start putting that in. And what the sky does, look at that. Working the sky in, it's giving us that gray tone inside of the ear. See? We're just naturally getting that from those colors that were already there. Just looking at my reference to get a little bit more. Now, he really does not have a pink nose, and he does not have pink eyes, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm not a big fan of the pink-eyed bunny look. Um, I know that those bunnies can be just as loving, but I end up with that um, sort of off-put feeling. I don't know how to ex how to explain that. I am going to take some of the yellow ochre 
and a touch of the burnt umber and some more of that white and a lot of white. Oh, there's a little bit of blue in it. That's okay. I want to start blocking in the color on the bunny. See, he's got that. He actually has a much darker tone underneath. Maybe I will take that darker. Oh, there we go. Still light, but darker. So here between his legs and here under his body by that other leg. There's a bit of this coming up. There's some of that tone under his chin coming down into his chest. And this is, if you notice, I'm kind of making my strokes go the direction of the fur. So this way, and this is leading up into his little chest fur. And there's a bit of a shadow right here where it bends at his, at his little knees. We've got some of that color here right below his eye and here on his cheek. And he actually has a bit of a mustache right below his nose. Oh, what does, I don't, I don't like the pink eyed bunny thing. It just doesn't set right for me. Some, for some reason, um, pink eyed bunnies kind of make me feel uneasy. That's what I was meaning by that. Just pink eyed bunnies make me feel uneasy. And it's just a personal thing. Everybody has their own, um, set of things that can make them feel uneasy or make them feel really happy. This bunny with his pretty dark eyes and his little nose, he just, he just made me feel really happy. <laughs> so, you know, that's what I'm, that's why I'm doing him. So the paint in my brush is lightening up some. I've got a little bit of white in here. So we're just going to work the color around as the paint comes out of the brush. And this is the blocking age blocking in stage. So, you know, we are not going to have a beautiful bunny right at this very moment. He will turn out to be so cute by the end. I have faith we are going to make it. <laughs> All right, so now I am going to go ahead and change to my round brush, I think. I'm going to start working a lighter version. So I need more white mixed into that dark color. I will probably be putting, whoopsie, I've got green in there now. So to not contaminate everything, I'm going to take my brush and just wipe it off. Look at that. Unlike watercolor, where if you contaminate your watercolor, it's, it's done. Gouache, you can kind of move stuff around. So I fixed it up. All right. Bit more white. Lots more white. There we go. So now we are going to get that tone that's under his, under his cheek coming out. See, it's a much lighter color, but it's not white. And I'm making those colors sort of flow in to the darker colors. You can infinitely blend these. You can, and you can also end up taking it all the way back almost all the way back to your paper. So he has a bit of this light fur right below his nostril. He's got this light fur under his, under his lip and coming out. So 
So if you have any questions, I will try and keep up. I'm going to put some light out here. And I'm going to do that out here on his body also. Thank you, Mark, for helping out. Mark is my husband. And he is hanging out in the other room and taking care of chat. I'm not going to be too specific down here on his feet and legs because I am going to be covering a lot of this up with grass, but I want to make sure that there is something down here. You can thin this paint down so that you can have a nice flow like this. See? We can get a nice flow. We can get that bunny fur. I think I'm I think I've flipped my colors though. And what I mean by that is I'm looking at it going that light out here on his cheek. We can we can move these colors around. We can choose what what's going on top. I just need to remember that there's a light color there. There's kind of a light color near his eye and over his eye. Then he's got more of the darker tone that's coming around from the ear and coming down. See a lot of blue worked into his head here. So I'm just working it back out. You can make a gouache painting act like a watercolor the entire time and have it be beautiful the entire time. I tend to work with gouache a lot more like an acrylic. So I do get that um, a little bit of the less than pleasing, a little bit of the ugly stage. And that's okay. I like the fur. I I sort of turned his head just a little bit more towards me than what the than what the reference has. Show you the reference again. See, mine is turned a little bit more towards us. And that's what happens when you draw things by hand. Sometimes the angle of your subject will change. And that's okay. You know? Go with it. Now we're going to get some of this lighter tone going up into his ear. All right. Yay, Anessa, thank you for being here. I think that I am probably going to be doing the order in dinner tonight also. Uh, it's sort of a, in the States, we're kind of having a an order in your dinner day to help out the restaurants. So, you know, the, so many people are struggling right now. The businesses are struggling. The workers are struggling. And if you do order in, make sure and drop a little extra on for the delivery driver. A little extra tip. Many of them are really, really struggling because they're gig type workers and they don't have health care. Some businesses do have their own delivery services and many of them are still hourly under the, under the threshold where they don't have health care. So anytime, if you're in a position to do it and it doesn't it doesn't threaten your well-being. It's kind of a nice thing. So it kind of looks like bunnies have a little extra, I don't know if it's a Henry's pocket or not, but yes, Mark? Do, set up art shows and fairs to sell things sometimes? Do I set up at art shows and fairs? I haven't. I haven't. That might be something I work on, or I might start doing virtual art shows. And setting up a virtual art show 
where people can come through and uh, online. Would anybody buy my art? You know, that's, I, I'm always, uh, you know, it's always one of those things of every artist, no matter who they are, always worry about, will anybody even come? Will anybody even want to buy my art? You know, that's, that's not just me. That's pretty much the, the artist in general, I think, feel that way. Even super, super successful artists are always like, mm, is anybody even going to show up? He looks like your honey bunny. Oh, Shelly, that's cool. So you have bunnies, huh? Now I'm just sort of wandering around here and dropping color on. And if I need to move it around a bit, I can just get it wet and I can use the color that's there. and start working it in. He's got pretty light fur right up here around his eye. I'm going to take a touch of that darker color and work some of that over the top of his nose now. I keep looking to the side here because I have that reference. I'm, tr I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out the best way so that you can see a bit of the reference <laughs> and my painting and the <laughs> and the palette. So I'm going to work some of this really this darker tone up here into his ear and down around the front. And this is the back of his ear, so. Yes, Sandy, you do, don't you? Because you, I believe you won, wasn't that the um, underwater, the underwater pearl that I did on uh, um, Sea Life one? I'm trying to remember if that's the one that you got. Sometimes I'll do giveaways of my art if anybody's, you know, interested in that. But, you know, it's, it's always a, it's always a, a challenge to figure out what to do and how to share in ways that people would, oh, good, <laughs> good. I remembered, right. But look, he's starting to come in. My bunny is a little bit chubbier. <laughs> But I'm pretty happy with that. I'm happy that he's chubbier. So now he has that darker mustache. It's actually right over where his lips are, but I call it the mustache. It's underneath the nose area. Kind of has darker coming down. And I'm putting the, putting the strokes in the direction that the fur is growing. So that way I have less less work to do later because I'm not fighting my, my brush strokes. So then I'll be able to follow the brush strokes. And I know that he's not as dark out here, but since my background is lighter over his back right here, you see how the, the background was much darker around the back part of him around his back here and my sky is much lighter. So I'm actually going to have to put a little bit of shadow or darkness back here. Not a lot. It's going to end up being just a tiny little, kind of like a little outline or just a, a tone indication. I want to start wor warming him up, cleaning your closet and found your very first painting you did. Ah, very sweet. Yeah, I'm I'm working on finding groups that I can do things like that with uh, Debbie, 
going to, you know, doing art shows and such, being part of a group. I just haven't quite, you know, got my, got my tribe yet on that. Warming up his back, warming up the front of him some. His fur comes out a little farther. There's more dark. This is sort of a push and pull. You, you push in some color and then you pull back a little bit. And the neat thing with the gouache is that you can just keep layering and working it in and getting that shape that you want. I'm going to try and not do to be, become too fussy, but you know, there's a certain amount of fussiness that happens here. I want him to look good for you. Okay, but this is actually starting to come in. He's starting to, to work his way in. I Like I said, I'm not too worried about his feet. They're going to end up being pretty much in the, in the grass. Am I going to put clouds in? I could put some clouds in here. I could do that. That's, that's something I could do. But first I want to get the bunny done and then I'll put the clouds in. So we're getting this dark color worked in around his little, like I said, kind of mustache area around his mouth. And it sort of flows down this way. Start getting a little bit darker up around his eye. A little bit darker right here. He's all going to pull together so quickly as we put the highlights on and get his eyes in. You know, I am having a lot of fun. I actually, yesterday, I was contacted by a new, a new division in Google. They're trying out a, you know, developing a new product called um, Tangi, which is a short short form, kind of like TikTok, except that it's only for art and DIY cooking type stuff. So you don't end up with, you know, all of the, the really weird, crazy things that um, TikTok can get. And I posted my first, I posted my first one. So if you are interested I posted a copy. Paste. I posted a little water how to how to make your own little watercolor book. It's the only video I've got up, but it's something that could possibly become a really new popular new new thing. And it was, it was really interesting and quite fun that they contacted me. I didn't have to contact them. And they asked if I wanted to become one of their creators. They're um, keeping it limited. They're not letting just anybody go on and, and start creating. You have to have a, basically you have to be invited in. So that's pretty cool. I'm like really very excited. So if you're interested and you want to check it out, and if you check it out, if you could uh, click on that little heart and maybe bookmark it, leave a comment, watch it a couple times. <laughs> it's only 58 seconds, but I do talk and I show step by step how to make a little watercolor book so that you have watercolor paper that you can do your paintings in. And I might be using that little booklet in some special surprise videos that I might have coming up. And yeah, Debbie, I'm doing a lot of videos. And dur during Acrylic April, I'm pretty much going to be focusing on the Acrylic April type videos. Doing those live. Which is going to be fun. 
See, I just, I picked up some white. I added it to here, but I didn't, I'm not wiping out all the color below. Starting to get more of that bunny fur look. I look at this bunny and I kind of think Velveteen Rabbit. This bunny would be one of those very loved bunnies. Let's see. I picked up kind of this brighter, get a little bit brighter, individual hairs or clumps of hairs. Again, he's going to end up down in the grass, so... Hey, Chrissy! Did the link not work? I'll post the link in the description below also. And the link is for my tangy, uh, tangy, I keep saying tangy, it's tangy, like T-A-N-G-E-E. -E. So we're getting, starting to work in a little bit of that shadow here, the separation. Yes? Okay, good. And get a little bit more white. I'm I'm getting closer and closer here to getting the grasses in. Every step you take, you're you're getting closer. There. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to put in every single hair. You don't have to put in every single bright spot. All right. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you checking that out when you have a chance. You know, doesn't cost anything. And uh, your YouTube, the login that you use to be able to chat on YouTube is the same login because it is Google. Getting a little highlight. His ear is going off the edge. This is actually the tape up here at the top. Oh, I'm sorry, Sandy. I didn't know that it wasn't something, but there, um, it will be available eventually. Um, they are, they're rolling it out right now. There's only about, you know, how YouTube has like, um, billions of creators now. Uh, Tanji only has like 300 creators doing videos right now. They're actively adding new creators all the time. Okay, I, I need to get my paint thinned down just a little bit. This would be an awesome cuddle bunny. I'm going to take some of that brown that really dark burnt, burnt umber. And I'm going to put it in on his eyes right now. Because we need to get his eyes going. <laughs> that looks like a smiley face on his eye there. He has some little eyelashes. He has a little divot right here in front of his eyeball. This isn't photorealism. This is just having fun. But there you go. How's that for an eyeball? We got that one in. Now let's see if I can get the, the other side in. A little divot.
Yeah, I go quiet when I'm doing something like that. Ah. And then he's got a little eyelash coming off up there. Might need to come up a little bit higher. Like that. Oh, yeah. There. And now he has his little super dark for in his nostrils. Those little tiny touches. Tiny touches. All it takes. And actually, I want to lighten this just a smidge. with the yellow ochre and the burnt umber to give him that little bit of hair up here on his, the back of his ear and make it stand out just a bit as it's going back and away. The little guard hairs on his ears. There. So we're doing pretty good. So if you are enjoying this, please make sure you're clicking the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Leave me a comment after the video. That really helps in uh, getting YouTube to know that people did enjoy this. They liked it enough to leave a comment <laughs> or didn't like it enough. You know, that, that works too. Hopefully people like it. Yes, you can get, you can get gouache at, um, I know you can get it at Michael's and, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know the other big, big box stores, um, but pretty much any big box store, you can get it online on uh, Amazon. You can get it online at Michael's and they will do the, you know, the drive up curbside delivery. If you're going to be out anyway, doing something, going to the grocery store for one of your, you know, times going out. Oh, he's looking good. Just these, these little extra detaily bits. I didn't put any straight black out, so let's see if I can take a bit of that violet and mix it with a bit of that burnt umber to get a darker, maybe a touch of ultramarine, maybe a touch of crimson. I just don't want it to be pink. We already had that conversation. You know, just, that's actually giving me a pretty good dark. Let's see. I, I want to get a little bit darker. On the actual eyeball. Because I want his eyeball to be pretty much the darkest. That and his nostrils to be the darkest things. Yep, yeah, that just, that just helps just enough. I'm going to have to rotate. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of just a touch of water to make it flow a little bit better. This would make such a sweet little card for someone. Wow. <laughs> I need a little bit of that darker tone. Not, not quite so dark. Let's move back to the, just the burnt umber. I didn't wash my brush out completely. So there's still a little bit of that purpley tone in there. But after I touch this in, I can then go back and brush it just a little bit with 
clean water in the brush. Yeah, because that's just a little bit too, a little bit too strong. But then what you do, clean water. Yep, brush is clean. Not too wet, not too wet. Just a clean, clean damp brush. And then you can tap it and lift a little bit of the paint that's underneath of it. And there we go. <laughs> so the whiskers can go in and then we'll do the clouds and then the grass. The cell phone will show comments um, after the video. If you um, click to do comments right now, you would have to close chat. If you are on a cell phone or a tablet, if you click the little drop down arrow for the more information, the comments will actually show up underneath of that. You just scroll up, at least on my phone. Now, some phones might be different. Um, I'm going to grab the rigger brush and get my wet, my white, really, 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 really wet. And just roll the brush in, make sure that I'm getting a nice, nice flow. These do not have to be super stark or a ton of them. And if you don't feel comfortable doing them, you don't have to. And his whiskers come out from this little knob right here next to the nose. They don't actually come from out here on his cheek. They come from right here. Needs to be wetter. So they come out right, right there. Touch and drag really lightly. Drag and lift. So touch, drag, and lift and, and just like barely kiss. And if it skips, that's okay. Just a couple. You don't have to do, you know, everything that you see on the picture. Just a couple gives you the, the indication that he has whiskers. And if some are thicker and some are thinner, that's okay. He does have a couple that sort of drip down across his chest. I'm not going to be working around there anymore. Just like that. Let's see. Oh, he does have eyelash or eyebrow whiskers. So I'll give him a couple eyebrow whiskers. Those usually come right above the eye up here and sort of, whoo, he's got some heavy eyebrows. Just a couple. I'm not going to. I'm not going to whisker him up. The clouds I'm going to keep up high, I think, because I just put the whiskers on or I'll put them back on again. <sighs> Okay, look at that. Oh, he's coming in so nicely. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the, do the clouds. So I am taking the white and I actually am gonna pick up a little bit of that pink, just a touch. Warm that white up just a little bit. And I'm using that number 12 round and I'm going to put it on its side and I'm going to just smush and drag kind of kind of like bob clouds and because we've got that blue in the background it's actually going to come in 
and give us that feeling of multi layers without having to do a ton. See, look at that. Now I can come forward. Keep your more solid, solid color to the top of your cloud and let the bottom of the cloud just sort of fade out. Since I hadn't planned on doing clouds, I'm like, hmm, where am I going to put the clouds? Put it up to the top of the cloud and then let it fade out. And then let's say this one's going along here behind his, behind him. And then we have another cloud that's going to be down here. And if you just have a little bit of white in your brush and you put it on and you wiggle, because we have that blue in the background already, you can get just soft, pretty clouds. Push a little bit as you're going up to the top to get some little mounds and let it work in. All right. I don't want to do any more clouds. I, I think this is going to be fine. And now we're going to go ahead and get the grasses and the clovers in. So to get the grasses in, I'm actually going to take some of this sap green and a little bit of that yellow ochre and a little bit of the lemon yellow and get kind of a naturally looking green. It's not dark enough, so I'm just going to start laying some of these in. I want darker, so I'm taking some of that burnt umber, burnt sienna, and I'll add that with a little bit of the ultramarine and some sap green. Get some more brown tones going on down here places where the grasses are growing out of. Then we'll layer more grass on top of it. Have you guys noticed that I didn't do any drying this time? Any drying? We just, we just worked our way around. Let's see, maybe there's some little grassy shapes in here in the shadows. Just get the dark color down here at the base so it so it's weighted down. And remember, when I peel this off, we're going to have a nice white border all the way around. And I am going to add the, not Viridian. Let's see, what are we going to add to the palette? We are going to add a little Prussian blue since we're we're really trying to darken up that green. because the yellow ochre and Prussian blue can make a real pretty green. I'm just going to muck up my whole yellow ochre now. So we can start getting that in there. You want it to flow out of your brush. So And I'm, I'm not worried if it dries or, you know, goes a little dry brushy on me or doesn't flow off into a perfect piece of grass. It's okay. This was the Prussian blue and the yellow ochre. And now it's actually picking up some of those colors from underneath. Again, not worried about making this perfect, but I want to get some bright in here. I don't want it to end up looking like it's dead grass. 
So just taking some of that lemon yellow, just hitting a few spots here and there, give him a little bit of light and life. Thank you, Mary. I'm so glad that people are enjoying this. I'm really enjoying this. So now I need some of the crimson and that lilac. And a touch of white. We're going to get some little clovers in here. Clovers are really quite fun and easy because they're basically just little taps of the brush. And we'll bring some lighter color and darker color into it. But you see it's just tap, tap, little taps of the brush. Bring some clovers down here. Add a little light life down, down below. Maybe one over here. I'm just putting some, few of them tucked in different places now. That's probably plenty. I think that's plenty. So I want to grab a touch of the violet and add that into my pinky whitewash. See how we're just layering. And just using the, the tip of the brush to do the work. Interesting, I have held on to this silly eraser the entire time. And right now everything is going to the darker side. I will put out just a touch more white so that I can go in here and give them some quick highlights, but I think I want even darker. So I'm just going to go straight into the violet. Remember the links for all the supplies are down below in the more information box. And those are affiliate links. So if you're looking for a way to support my channel, I have several different ways. I do have a Patreon if you're interested in uh, supporting on a monthly basis. And there's different things that I'm doing over there for my patrons some extra coloring sheets and they get some behind the scenes and pretty much at all the levels there's really great stuff. Okay so now we're gonna pull out some sorry we're gonna pull out some crimson and clover over and over. Oh yeah I know that <laughs> I I probably wouldn't get um dinged by the uh, YouTube for copyright infringement, but know that I am singing that song in my head right now. That's black. That's there's white. <laughs> I need just a touch of white. You really don't use very much paint at all. Thank you, Tanya. So I'm taking some white and just just touching it into the purple a little bit. And we're going to give it just some light. Light little touches. Make it pop out of the shadows just a little bit. Some of these that are down lower, I'm going to keep those light light touches more to the top and let it pick up some of the color that's below. 
sweet. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, I've got Patreon, I've got uh, Super Chat, I've got uh, affiliate links, Amazon, Arteza. But remember that the main things that really, really help me right now are you guys coming to my live shows. I am so grateful that you're here. And having people sharing my videos with their friends. And sharing time in the chat room. I mean, really, that's the stuff that's making me really, really happy right now. It's when people are sharing and people are coming and chatting and having fun. And that makes me feel very grateful. Yep, and I can, I can just keep playing with this. But what I should do is just throw some little little brand or little stems in little stems so i'm just going to grab that darker blue green roll my my brush around and then give them just some little leaves they're not not real clover leaves but just throw a few little leaves in so it looks like they're different from the from the grasses. Just tap, 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 tap. That's all you, you don't need to do super, super involved here. Clovers, you know, have kind of rounded leaves, but this is just, just going in. They might be growing up around all of the other things. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. We are going to take the tape off and see how he end. Oh, oh, I need to put my signature on. Yes. Let's go with that sort of light lavender purple. Just down there. It's very subtle. I like having a subtle signature on my on my pieces. So I'll move that out of the way. Get everything moved back out of the way. All right, we're going to pull the tape off. I'm going to say thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate you. I hope that you find some joy in your day. Contact some friends, do a voice chat you know, email people. If you do this picture, would you please share with me on social media by tagging me at Deliberately Creative. I'm on Instagram and Pinterest and Facebook, all those places. Get that out of the way. <laughs> so there we go. Remember, guys, to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>